Hello and uh, welcome back to Kevin Cameron Art. Today I'm going to try to just loosely cover a couple of things, give you some art tips. Um, I'm not saying I'm an expert or anything, but I've been painting for uh, a long time and designing and doing art. And, um, you know, actually since I was really, really young. And uh, I'm in my 50s now, and so I've had lots of time to practice, so I should know something. Anyway, um, this is to be somewhat some of the basic ideas of design. It's going to be about some of the principles of design and and art, which the two of them tend to go together a lot, design and art. Sometimes they can be somewhat separated. This is more on art and maybe the designing of art rather than the other way around. So by showing you a couple of paintings this morning, I hope to be able to um, just cover a couple things. Uh, Probably when you start a painting, you probably wonder, where do I begin? Sometimes it's best to begin with the rules. Um, in art and in anything creative, we know that breaking the rules sometimes is what matters. It, what, it uh, is a way of expressing what we're really feeling. Uh, this, these principles could apply to set design. They could apply to um, cinematography, photography, anything like that. So... I won't get into that too much right now and, and waste your time. I just want to show you a few of my own paintings and give you an idea of maybe some of the things to look for as you're beginning to compose. This is something called composition. I think as you get more and more used to it, you it kind of comes naturally. And then you may have this, like I said before, have this uh, creative urge to, to break out of one of these principles. You, you'll see what I mean. Um, Maybe the first one is kind of simple, and you don't see it a lot in folk art, because folk art isn't really concerned with a three-dimensional um, uh, result, you know, to get there. It's, it's more of a two-dimensional. So it applies and doesn't apply. As we said, it's kind of good to know the rules, and these are the rules that, goes, that go way back, you know, way back in time that some of the realist painters um, follow. And one of them is perspective. If you can see... Um, I'll get my pen here. If you can see in this painting, for example, if you follow this point and this point and this point, you can see the lines, they're not parallel perfectly, but they go to what we call a, an imaginary vanishing point. And it's somewhere, it could even possibly be off this page. Maybe one of the best ways to show you is take this point here, and there's a, a, maybe a line here, and, and you see, in this, this is known as perspective, the, the point follows somewhere off the, off the uh, canvas in this, play, in this case. But you can see that everything in, in between, the, the windows, the, this uh, midsection here, and, and the top and bottom of the roof, they all follow that line. And that will give you a kind of a guide. Um, this isn't what they call it completely isometric, which we learn in drafting. I think it was, what, 30 degrees, 30 degree, and 30 degrees and 60 or something, and, and 90 degrees, I can't remember exactly. So this one is kind of going a bit like this. And I think there's a, there's a reason for that, as I'll cover in a minute, why the lines are going this way and why the lines are going this way. Okay, that's, a, that's perspective. Um, I think we'll just cover the principles in this painting, and maybe I can just grab a couple paintings, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and so, so perspective is important. Like you say, you've seen folk art. I wish I had a picture of some, something that was folk arty. Uh, maybe Maude Lewis, you think of, look up some of her paintings. And it's, it's just flat, like, and, and that's fine. That appeals, that's artistic, that's creative. Another thing to look for in a, in a painting when you're composing it is, is I'll call it framing. And it's natural framing. Again, it doesn't have to be there. But you can see this pole here is, is, a, is an object on this side that kind of breaks with that direction, the direction we talked about in the perspective. And it kind of stops the eye. Okay? So on this side, you see you have, you have this street lamp or crosswalk lamp, and then you have some more street lamps here. And those as well seem to stop stop the eye from traveling, especially this way. It, it seems the painting is saying, I want you to look more this way, because as you can see, this is a heavier frame. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
I'm kind of trying to keep this brief, and um, but let's let's just take a look at that. So we have have this framing, and it it is to get you to look where I'm trying to get you, the viewer, to enjoy and see what I'm trying to get you to see. So it's kind of getting you to look this way mostly, if you can see what I'm saying. Um, there is another aspect to to art that's part of composition, and there's well, there's more than just the cut ones I'm covering. But color is another one. I think I'll leave color. Color is so, there's so much to color theory. Um, but I think I'll, I'll just leave that. So we've got perspective, we've got framing, as you can see. Now another thing that's kind of close to framing, and this is, I would say, more to do with co uh, the composition, in a way, is what you call balance. Balance or weight. Uh, oddly enough, these these little drawings have actual weight to them. It's like our brain is expecting a certain mass to balance off another certain mass or, or weight. Uh, I hope you can understand what I'm saying. Maybe by example here, uh, sometimes you can use color or thickness as, as weight. Just to go back to the framing, you see this pole is a heavy pole. Now this painting isn't finished yet, so maybe it's not the best one to be showing you. But this pole here is um, is a, a heavy kind of framed weight. These three over here almost make up for the same weight. But in a sense, you can see this black, um, what do they call that? That comes down over the, uh, the canopy, over where the people are dining. This black and dark area, the, the value of it, the dark and light of it, kind of balances here, if you can see. And, and uh, that's called, that you're looking for that, you're looking for objects. Imagine these are just cut out pieces of paper and you want to put your objects, your clouds, your pole, your buildings, and the tree, and you want to arrange them such that they feel right, that there's, the weight is balanced. Again, you could have this whole thing blank and do a, a Coke, half a Coke can over here, and you're breaking the rules of balance in some degree, but you're obviously getting the viewer to go and look at your Coke can. Okay, so what we have here is what I was talking about balance, I guess. Let's take a look at color. This isn't completely finished. This is going to be a, a red, this is going to be a, a red uh, fire plug or fire hydrant. And as you can see already, there's a bit of balance here in, in a triangular sense. Do you see that? There's a red brown door and you see a, an imaginary triangle. You see that? That's, that's a balance. And Another aspect, of, just to keep this short, I guess, is motion. Motion is important in art because it makes the picture less boring. Again, you can paint something very static, very photorealistic, but to have motion, and it doesn't mean you have to have people or birds, but you can use people or birds or animals, whatever. Again, this isn't finished, and I hope you can see it, but there are two more senior couples here walking. And this painting, by the way, is going to be called Couples. And it just so happened when I took the reference photo, there was two older couples here and two younger couples here. These were walking in this direction and, and, and these two were walking in this direction. And I thought, that's just wonderful. It's like it's saying something as they turn the corner, they're, they're becoming younger or there's some story there. Anyways, these people are walking, this is motion, they're walking in this direction now, of course, the bike is parked in the opposite direction, so that, that's okay. It's kind of balancing a bit, and if you see the bike, the red bike, kind of balances the, the red sign. So I hope you can, you can maybe even squint with your eyes and you can and see what I'm saying better, so if you just kind of squint. And so you have a couple people here and a couple people here, and then there's two people sitting. So what you're seeing is motion in this direction. And with this type of painting, I'm trying to get a kind of a, a warped, cartoony view and you can see that, that this pole is even leaning as if you were using, um, oh, what do they call it, like a 28 millimeter fisheye lens or 14 or whatever they used to be. You know how you get like the fisheye looks really warped looking. Well, as you can see, and even this, maybe it's a breeze coming in and it's swaying this way, this flower pot. But it's moving your eye in this direction and the motion is in this direction. And I think what I was thinking when I designed it, without thinking, sort of subconsciously, 
is that we're moving into town. We're, we're going, this is the, this actual building, the coffee merchant, is kind of the beginning of the dense part of Wolfville. And, and that's how we're moving in this direction. You see the clouds too? The clouds balance each other out, but they don't just balance each other out. They, they flare off this way. You see that? Like almost like wings, right? So when you put these things into words, it's not quite the same. But you begin to see it, and when someone views your art, and if they like your style, they like your subject, you're giving them something interesting. As a friend of mine said, sometimes she adds texture to an otherwise flat painting just to make it interesting. So we have perspective, we have uh, framing, I just got a couple notes here, motion and balance and weight. So I think that's all we'll talk about today. There's just some tips there. Remember you can you can balance the value of, of, of an object, like it's, 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 it's white to dark, it's light to gray, or it's color, but we're not going to talk too much about color today, so we won't get into all that. And we motion and um, perspective. So, hey, okay, really quickly, I'll just grab a couple more. This one was finished. Again, you can see, you can see some motion, the leaves, the, the leaves on this, this uh, bush or whatever, sort of pointing you in this direction. You see framing again. You see perspective. Um, uh, yeah, maybe even this crosswalk is part of that motion. You know, people come and go across here. You see the, the shape of the sign here to give uh, Webster Street is, is almost the same as this. And you've got some yellow here and yellow here. Perhaps a yellow car sitting down here might have been a good idea at the time. I'm not sure. All right. I hope you're following what I'm saying. Um, I'll show you some other quick ones here. Here is uh, one of a um, hay stack that used to be up in the field. You see how the picture is framed. It's kind of a reddish pink. These are apple blossoms. And the weight of these kind of counterbalance the weight of this, and it's a clear sky, and, and everything's done in three planes. You can see one, two, three in this one. Okay? Let's see. Here's another one that shows us some framing. Um, you can see that the two houses are pointing. There's motion here. There's motion here. So these are going with the motion. The cat's sort of static in the middle, and he's viewing this all. It's like you, you're the viewer, and you see everything's kind of caught up in there. You got a, you got a big section here, and then a small section. You see, you can break it into, a, and that expanse is telling you something that this is more about the, the expanse, the. Uh, ethereal experience that this cat is having of otherworldliness or whatever. The colors are telling you that too. Again, we won't talk. Um, here's one. Hopefully you can hear me here. Here's one I did a while back. It is uh, planets and it's in an orchard. And as you can see, these, these objects are, it doesn't have to be perfectly balanced because otherwise it would be boring. But you can see that you've got three, three here, three here, three here which gives it kind of a, one of those um, planetarium effects like you might see on, oh, like, I don't know, something like one of those national treasure movies or whatever it was called. Um, this one is designed that it can be flipped around because in space, of course, there's no up or down. So you have a horizon with trees and the moon at night. And you flip it around and you still have a kind of a field with trees. And you can see in the background, it's equally divided. What my thinking was there, well, I haven't got time to go into it. You can see a bit of a, this, this, this is almost placed in this space here, this triangular space. So that's what you're looking for when you create a painting. Maybe one more, I'll show you one more, just to give you the idea. Here's a cat, my cat at Halloween. If you look at it, you see it's framed by, apparently this is another, or I guess so I was designing it as another pumpkin was looking. And... Um, a, 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 like looking through the pumpkin's eye, the Halloween pumpkin, you have a kind of a sphere, an ellipse and an ellipse and a sphere, they're all, you see, one, two, three, you see that they're lined up, that's so the focus can go right on the cat and here, um, you see a bit of framing in the, in the value of the color here too as well, light to dark, things to look for. I think... That's about it. Maybe this one might have some in there. This is a close-up of a couple, kind of film noir-ish couple, you know. 
the colors are balanced complementary color of of yellow is purple so that you know and purple is mystery yellow is happiness and whatever um, you can see in this one that their eyes are almost in a perfect line and their nose are almost perfect line and their mouth is in a perfect line and there may be even you can see motion in her hair you see that he's more static all these things are telling you things and just for the sake of this video being fast um, uh, what else could I tell you about this maybe you can see an overall weight or balance there if you look at it and sometimes maybe if you turn the painting upside down you can tell you can see it better because you're not so focused on what you're looking at but you can see the objects you see and then this, the the oval shapes here too they're almost center in the painting uh, the weight of his hat against the weight of her extra hair I think um, I think we'll do with that and hopefully this video comes out for you all right and uh, you get to learn so thanks for uh, and I like to learn too so thanks for watching and um, stay tuned for another one have a great day and stay creative